Otto Rank published his book In Quest of the Hero in 1909. This book centred on the legend of Oedipus and was heavily influenced by Freudian psychodynamic theory. As such, it was intended as a tool for psychology rather than history. In his book, Rank advanced a list of characteristics of psychological hero figures. Child of distinguished parents. Father is a king. Difficulty in conception. Prophecy warning against birth. Hero surrendered to water in a box. Saved by animals or lowly people. Suckled by female animal or humble woman. Hero grows up. Hero finds his distinguished parents. Hero takes revenge on the father. Acknowledged by the people. Achieves rank and honours. Lord Raglan, in his 1936 book The Hero, A Study in Tradition, Myth and Drama, took this list, changed its purpose and developed it with input from other works on mythology. His purpose was to identify common themes that occurred in mythical heroes from all around the world and specifically applied to stories that were not related to each other, avering that myth-building has certain common features irrespective of where the myths came from. Raglan did not propose that his list be used to test for historicity. He accepted that some historical characters had been mythologised, and his interest was not in the historicity of the characters, but in the mythologization process. Since Raglan's time, the study of storytelling in general, and mythology in particular, has indeed focused on certain essential elements, but they are much more general than Raglan's hero list. This list of seven points or variants on it is fairly widely agreed. There is a supernatural realm and characters such as gods. Myths often relate how life and nature came about. They often contain an element of determinism and soothsayers who read and express it, so that there are rules of nature that even gods can't break. There are often universe-wide conflicts between good and evil or simply between opposing forces. There is often a quest, there is often a power struggle with rising tension as the story progresses, and there is a reward when the quest is accomplished. Anyway, this is Lord Raglan's list of 22 characteristics of mythical heroes. Mother is a royal virgin. Father is a king. Father often a near relative of mother. The hero's conception is unusual. They are said to be a son of God. An attempt is made to kill them as an infant, often by the father or maternal grandfather. The hero is spirited away as a child. They are reared by foster parents in a far country. There are no details available of childhood. The hero returns or goes to future kingdom. Is a victor over king, giant, dragon or wild beast. Marries a princess, often the daughter of predecessor. Becomes a king. For a time he reigns uneventfully. He prescribes laws and later loses favour with gods or his subjects. He's driven from his throne and city. He meets with a mysterious death, often at the top of a hill. His children, if any, do not succeed him. His body is not buried, and he has one or more holy sepulchres or tombs. Mythicists have taken this list, I'm tempted to say it's seized on this list, and changed its purpose. They suggest that it be turned into a test of historicity. It's been claimed by some that it is not being used as a test for historicity, but rather as the basis of what is called their prior probability of historicity. But that is a semantic misunderstanding. Every time it is used by mythicists, it is as a test for historicity, and its output is supposedly a probability of historicity. In principle, there's nothing wrong with turning a list like this into a test. Even if it was not originally intended for that purpose, it is entirely possible that it would form a good test, but in order to establish that, it is necessary to establish the specificity and sensitivity of the test at each point on its scale. In other words, to examine how it performs in large numbers of cases and from the results derive a receiver operating characteristic curve or rock curve like this one. What's confusing about rock curves is that the test result does not appear anywhere on the graph. For each point, it simply plots sensitivity or true positive rate against specificity or false positive rate. Sensitivity refers to how likely it is that mythical characters will be correctly identified as such by the test. Specificity 
refers to how likely it is that a historical character will be correctly identified as non-mythical by the test. Basically, a useless test that is no better than flicking a coin is the black diagonal line. A good test has a curve far from the diagonal line like this. A poor test is closer to the diagonal line like this. Rock curves are complicated and there are plenty of good videos on them so I'm going to cop out and assume them now. The reason for using a rock curve is to allow us to judge how good a test is. Once that's done, we can apply the test to Jesus, note his score and readily calculate the probabilities we're after. To apply the test you need to be highly consistent. It may be necessary to alter some of the characteristics in order to broaden their definitions, but this must be done for all heroes studied and applied to each one in exactly the same way. Special pleading for individual heroes just cannot be allowed. With all that in hand, it would be fair to use Raglan's list and apply it to Jesus, look at Jesus' score on the receiver operating characteristic and come back with a result of specificity and sensitivity from which a probability of historicity could be calculated. So that's what mythicists have done, right? Of course not. Not even close. They've made no assessment of specificity or sensitivity at any point, let alone all points. They liberally use special pleading when applying the list to Jesus, and they tacitly assume that anyone scoring over a certain arbitrarily chosen value is likely to be non-historical, without any of the above-mentioned hard work. So this is not encouraging. We're not expecting to get very far with historicity in Raglan's list. But for completeness, and because I'm trying to be fair, let's go over the list and apply it as I have indicated we should, and see how Jesus scores. So mother is a royal virgin. No, Mary was not royal, and so was not a royal virgin. Father is a king. No, remember no special pleading. Heavenly kings and lines of David do not count. Father often a near relative to mother. No, unusual conception. Yes, said to be a son of God. Yes. Attempt to kill hero as an infant, often by father or maternal grandfather? Yes, though not by a family. Spirited away as a child? Yes. Reared by foster parents in a far-off country? No, not reared by foster parents at all. No details of childhood? No. Few details in the New Testament, but more details in extra-biblical traditions. Returns or goes to future kingdom? Yes, does return to Egypt. Is victor over king, giant, dragon or wild beast? No. Marries a princess, often daughter of a predecessor. No, by no stretch of the imagination is the church a princess. Becomes king. No. Remember, no special pleading. Heavenly kings don't count. For a time reigns uneventfully. No. Prescribes laws. No. Raglin was talking about temporal laws. Spiritual laws don't count. Loses favour with gods or subjects. OK, yes. Adoring crowds do turn against him. Driven from throne and city? No, he didn't have a throne. Meets with a mysterious death? No, there is nothing mysterious about crucifixion. On the top of a hill? OK, yes, not in the Gospels, but other traditions place Golgotha on the top of a hill. His children, if any, do not succeed him. This is not applicable, as he had no children. His body is not buried? No, he was buried. He has one or more holy sepulchres or tombs. Yes, he does. Three around Jerusalem, one in Japan and one in Kashmir. So to my reckoning, which I hope is not biased, Jesus scores 8 out of 21, as number 20 was not applicable. I've seen many presentations and papers in which mythicists use this scale and score Jesus generally between 13 and 21. I've never seen any mythicist score him as low as 8. And how do they get these inflated scores? Special pleading, of course. All the king stuff is attributed to him being a heavenly king, which was never intended by Raglan, and various other contortions are used. There are, of course, different ways of applying the test. It does depend, for example, on which version of the Jesus story you're using. I have used the totality of Jesus' mythology, which is why I've scored him no for no details of childhood and yes for died on the top of the hill, as neither of these are in the Gospels, but it doesn't really matter. The only way to get a high score is to distort the scale. 
So just for fun, let's look at how Jesus scores on our more realistic, modern list of myth characteristics. Supernatural realm and characters such as gods? Yes. Relates how life and nature came about? Yes, God made us. Determinism and soothsayers who read and express it? Yes, in Christianity there are fundamental laws that God can't break, such as sacrificial atonement for sin. He can bend them by sacrificing the wrong thing, but he's not able to break that rule. Universal conflict between good and evil or simply opposing forces? Yes, absolutely. A quest? Very much so. A power struggle with rising tension? Yes, between Jesus and the Jews. A reward when the quest is accomplished? Yes. Very interesting, but of course I've never claimed this was a test of historicity. Perhaps I should do the research and make a rock curve myself. Maybe not. It would be pretty pointless, as all sides agree that there is a lot of myth in the Jesus story. Also, if you apply this list to Alexander the Great or Abraham Lincoln, you'll find they do pretty well too. So, does Rank Raglan support mythicism? Well, the mythicists do have a point. If you apply scales like Raglan's, or even mine for that matter, to Jesus, then he's likely to end up in the company of a lot of characters who are mythical. The problem comes back to one of my first objections. That is that we are interested in the distinction between mythicism and minimal historicity, not triumphal historicity. And all of these mythical characteristics are rejected by minimal historicists anyway. So saying that, I would say no, rank Raglan does not support mythicism. But there is another point to make. The rank Raglan scale is applied by mythicists with such sloppy scholarship that it inevitably raises a question about how diligent their scholarship is on other issues. You could therefore argue that the rank Raglan scale, as it is applied, actually detracts from mythicism. <laughs>